Welcome back. You're watching NewsX. My name is Vineet. Well, tensions flared up in uh, several districts of Manipur earlier this week with fresh violence being reported in Bishnupur. A day after the spine-chilling incident in Manipur's uh, Jiribham, which left one woman dead, another woman was killed in Manipur's Bishnupur district after a group of armed miscreants launched an attack. The incident took place in uh, the Saitong area where the women, along with other farmers, went to tend to the crops when militants opened fire uh, from hills uh, and uh, hill-based positions on uh, the low-lying farmlands in Imphal Valley. According to officials, the woman died on the spot. Adding the incident uh, sparked tension in the village with the locals alleging that the central forces deployed in the area were not taking action to thwart such attacks. The incident was uh, reported two days after a 31-year-old woman was reportedly shot and set on fire as people in tribal uh, Hamar village were attacked by a group of armed militants in ethnic strife torn Manipur's Jeevam district. Manipur has remained foiled in uh, the Methi Kuki conflict in which nearly 240 people have been killed so far and over 60,000 others have been displaced. Sporadic incidents of violence have continued despite the presence of a large number of security apparatus, personnel and forces. Why is this continuing? Why? Isn't there an end to these atrocities, this tension, this friction and this killing? We'll discuss that once again. Mr. B.L. Vora, former DGP and Home Secretary Manipur, joins us on the program. Major Mohammad Ali Shah, defense expert, also with us on the program. Professor uh, Thongkola Haikip, uh, he's with the Center for Study of Law and Governance, JNU, also joins us. Uh, Dr. Bobo, spokesperson of the Delhi Methi Coordination Committee, with us on the program as well. Thank you, everyone, for being a part of this conversation. Mr. Vora, I'll begin with you, sir. Sir, you know, the violence in Manipur, uh, though continues, but the fact of the matter is that it is now transcending. There is a metamorphosis which is happening in Manipur when it comes to the violence that taking place. It's more brazen. It's more audacious. It is not latent as, as, as it used to be. And if it is being more brazen and audacious, that means there is no fear of the law. There is no fear of consequences. And there is definitely not as much patrolling or as much as security that should be given to a state like Manipur. Your, your thoughts, sir? We need, if you recall, when we had discussed this issue last time, when three so you muted at this said, point in time. I, I can't hear you. Could you unmute you yourself, sir? No, I'm not muted. I'm not yeah, muted. There you are, sir. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, sir. Okay. okay. I was saying, Vineet, if you recall when we were discussing last time, I had told you that the militants' organizations, the insurgent organizations have got a new lease of life now. When you were discussing the killing of three militants on the border, with the Burmese forces, if you remember that. So this is what is happening, and I can tell you that this violence is going to increase. Now, earlier, of course, these insurgents, groups of Maithis, which had become irrelevant, they were only extortionists. Later on, PLA, Prepark, etc., they have a new lease of life, they have a mission, and the mission is very bad, that is to kill cookies. And cookies also now, they have their own groups. Now, since civilians can't take on each other now because of security forces, so they have decided to take it on. And hapless citizens were the ones who are going to suffer. Now, there is, of course, enough patrolling, enough forces, but I think one will have to go back to those days again where counterinsurgency operations will have to go into the full swing now. And these are opponent groups. I remember when I first went to Imphal, Manipur, in 1980, in the streets of Imphal, there were insurgent groups operating from various mohallas. They, they call them lekais. That is what was happening. And things were very, very bad. It took a lot of time to control it. So I think now the counterinsurgency operations of the forces will have to come in a big way along with the army. That is the only way out of violence. Also, the peace efforts have failed. They, uh, they haven't taken place, if I may say so. Hard political decisions have not been taken by the center, including political decisions. 
the matter has been just left to itself nothing has been solved the same people are working the same partisan people are working in the police and in the bureaucracy now divided on community lines i had then suggested a president rule and which i reiterate today i had said take officers from outside take these guys send them elsewhere the locals who are manning the important positions and of course economically they all have to be held rehabilitation wise cookies are demanding chopper service and all to the chota chandpur very legitimate service so i think there is a lot to do but unfortunately nobody is doing anything that's my take on it vinith hmm all right professor uh, thonkulal if you can hear me Yeah. Professor Thonkalal, if you can hear me, sir, please respond. Yeah, I can hear you. I'm, I'm, I'm muted now. All right. Okay. Well, the problem in Manipur continues. It's been over a year now. Uh, where do you think security forces are failing when it comes to, uh, you know, trying to, you know, take Manipur back to the status quo that existed before uh, these tensions began? Uh. We need. Uh, let me tell you that there are two things that I would like to put uh, forward this uh, afternoon. Uh, the long-term solution to Manipur problem is political, and uh, right now, uh, as we witness another round of uh, fresh violence, let me tell you one thing uh, very clearly: that uh, there is a clear pattern that emerges out of this uh, uh, this uh, violence in the last uh, five months. Uh, there was about three months of relative uh, calm and peace after the Indian general elections, but after the Manipur tapes uh, emerged uh, uh, in the month of August and uh, on the last day of uh, August 31st, the cookies, uh, you know, have a nationwide rally and then demanding, you know, the prosecution of the present chief minister of Manipur. And the next day, you find that. Uh, there is a kind of violent incidents uh, coming out uh, of uh, Manipur uh, fringe areas, and uh, for the whole month of September, there was a kind of uh, you know violence and uh, you know arguments regarding the tapes, uh, the 200 uh, cookie militants from Myanmar. All these kind of uh, you know uh, disinformations were uh, spread, and uh, the whole month was occupied with all these kind of Uh, issues, arguments, and then we have uh, a relative calm <coughs> for another month. In the month of October, we have calm. But when uh, you know uh, uh, last week on uh, the last day of uh, CJI Chandrasekhar uh, term, uh, he heard the Manipur audio tape, and he said uh, the Supreme Court will investigate, look into the matter. And just before the hearing, you find that. Another incident of violence appeared in Jirubam, right, where a woman was uh, charged to death, who, who was killed, and uh, another seven houses of the village was burned down. And in retaliation of that, uh, we have another round of violence in Imphal Valley and the fringe areas. So these are the pattern that has emerged in terms of retaliation. And unfortunately, one woman uh, is reported to be uh, dead. Uh, with that kind of uh, violence, so this is the pattern, and uh, the common people, especially the women and children, are suffering. So we have to think uh, beyond, uh, you know, these armed groups. Uh, we have to think uh, beyond all this, you know, a kind of, uh, you know, attacks and counter attacks, and we have to look into political, right? The solution lies in political, uh, you know, negotiation between the two groups. Uh, the Home Ministry has to initiate that. And uh, look into the demands of the two groups, right? The cookies are demanding separate administration. How feasible it is? Uh, what could be the solution? That has to be negotiated, rather than uh, you know uh, taking it as a complex matter. That also involves the Nagas. The Union Home Ministry has to look into this matter holistically and try to accommodate uh, the views of the three groups. Try to accommodate. Uh, the insecurities of the three groups and uh, settle, bring out a certain kind of uh, settlement. That's the way forward. Otherwise, I don't think that this kind of hostility, this kind of uh, sporadic violence, uh, 
uh, will stop it will continue for another year uh, for another two three years if we are not uh, uh, solving or trying to solve this issue politically that's my uh, you know uh, that's my viewpoint hmm. dr bobo is also with us dr bobo uh, what do you think the center needs to do now uh, there have been some important points made that the sensitivities of both these communities have to be accommodated there have to be negotiations once again but they have happened in the past do you think that uh, the avenue for negotiations has to reopen and uh, perhaps the central government needs to realize that at some level uh good evening vinit uh, and all these respected uh, panelists today uh what i like to highlight is that uh, uh, at, uh, now the VL Bora has uh, stated that they are militants groups uh, and it has been going on for many years. Uh, but I like to state on that, uh, that before May 3rd, there was no such an incident or no such a blockage in the road or no such uh, civil society who have come out uh, uh, to protest uh, against uh, the violence. Until unless there is a threat and a national integrity of Manipur, that no, none of the civil society or none of the Maira Paibis or none of the local community uh, come out to protest uh, about it. It should be made very clear. Uh, after the Mehtad incident, uh, that uh, the, all the people of Manipur who have settled in, uh, especially in Par Valley, is they have come out to protest it because of that. Uh, Maite communities who have settled in the cookie-dominated areas, they has been uh, uh, burning down their houses, and uh, uh, many have been killed uh, by these cookie militant groups. That is the main reason that behind that this conflict is going on this should be made very clear not about the militancy pro militancy problem has been uh, handled with the central government and state government long time back not uh, the, uh, the the conflict which is, uh, should be mixed up with and secondly uh, what professor hawkeep has said yeah it should be a politically or some said we come out for a peaceful soul but uh, the people of manipur will never accept or will never compromise on this uh, territorial integrity of Manipur or some sort of cookie land or some uh, like uh, uh, union territories. It should be very uh, clear uh, to all the peoples and th those who have been trying to uh, crop out this uh, Manipur or disintegrate Manipur. This is my point, what I would like to uh, highlight this. Hmm. Major Mohammad Ali Shah, defense expert also with us on the program. Ali, thank you for joining us. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you, clear. All right. Ali, we can barely see you. There seems to be uh, no, we some, I can hear you. Some, some, some issue with your camera, but uh, the violence in uh, I can hear you. the violence in Manipur, Ali, continues. You have served there. You understand Manipur. Uh, we were talking about this just a couple of weeks ago. You know, two women have died in the last few days as a result of indiscriminate or rather should be called intentful firing. Uh, what's the solution over here? Before you join, our uh, panelists have gone on to uh, suggest a number of changes and tweaks that need to be done. Uh, but nothing seems to be working out, Ali. Why do you think that is? Uh, Vineet, unfortunately, we've allowed the fire to burn way too long. And when people say they didn't do anything, yes, they are doing that. I'm sure they must be doing their bit. But there are no results, unfortunately. What matters is the results. We have not been able to break peace in Manipur as yet. And as the day goes past me, the wounds are only getting deeper and deeper between both the Mahir and Kukis, who are both of them respectively are very, very good communities and tribes respectively very, very good. There's never been any difference between the two. Now, have allowed it to happen for way too long and as the day go past it's going on happening they and it's going to first if we don't nip it in the bud what i mean if we don't stop it now so certainly i feel it is measure which we have straight away and uh, from that, the 
Now, Ali, you're gonna yes, have to log in again. Uh, Ali, you're gonna have to log in again. There seems to, I think you're in a car and a moving vehicle. We won't be able to accommodate you, Ali, uh, unless you stop and you have a stable network. Mr. Bora, I'm gonna come back to you, sir. So what did you make of what our other panelists have said about, uh, you know, sitting across the table uh, for both the communities and hashing this out? You know, you're familiar with Manipur. How deep and profound are the differences uh, you know, that the violence has been going on for so long and, you know, there is rapid escalation on a daily basis. If it's escalating so rapidly, I'm very sure that there is this, you know, there is this entire ecosystem of misinformation and perhaps even outside unsolicited support, which is, uh, which, which, which is allowing uh, this, this disturbance to go on in our country. You have said it correctly, Vineet. The point is, see, these two communities are very fine communities. They all, both have their own aspirations, but at the moment, and they were both very peaceful communities. That is how they have been living for ages. See, ultimately, I'll go back to the background as to what happened, and this was the drug lords. They are the ones that all started basically with poppy cultivation. And that is what when the government of Manipur started taking the you know the steps to know who are, who these people are you know trying to find out their identities and all that to take action to deport them then the whole problem started and they were looking for a trigger which was given by the judgment of the high court which was not properly worded number one two that was twisted saying that these people the high court has ordered ST status for Marathi communities, which was not so. The High Court had only said, consider and then recommend. That. So that was not even done. The point is now that it's long time, the, you know, the two communities now, they, they have hardened their positions. And rightly so, because if their people are suffering every other day, that is what they will do. The spirit of accommodation is also now reduced considerably. And the efforts made by the government are, in fact, if you ask me, they are good for nothing so far. Hmm. Violence will go on, forces will keep on working, you know, then of course it has been happening in JNK for ages. But it, like it happened in Punjab, but finally it was nipped in the bud. I think we have already allowed it to simmer it far too long and it has been left to itself. I go back to what I initially said. I think you need very stick and carrot policy. Peace definitely a lot of efforts must be made. Stick also must be used because violence cannot be allowed, should not be allowed against citizens and even among between themselves, either as civilians or even as insurgent groups. But see, basically the job of security forces is what? To contain violence, that's it. But ultimately solutions have to be solved by the civilian society and that, that is where it boils down to the political effort, the civilian effort, the economic effort. Ultimately, that has to be done. And sir, what kind of a message does this send to our adversaries as well across the border? You know, that if we are not able to settle scores uh, between two communities within our country, then that is obviously in an open and a volatile area for them to capitalize and leverage on, isn't it? It is sending very bad message. Number one, it shows the central government either weak or indifferent. Now, if there is a place which is simmering with trouble, where there is indifference, others will prowl upon it. And that is what is happening. And there are countries like China, who are waiting in the wings. Pakistan now, or Pakistan has always been there now. Even Bangladesh now, with the change of the regime there. So everybody, you know, has been wanting a pie in the, in the northeast. When Pakistan was to be formed, was to be formed at that time, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman had also had said that East Pakistan and northeast, northeast should be part of East Pakistan. It's a natural extension because of the land. And that is why we have so much of illegal immigration from there. So I think your specific question is about message. It's a very bad message. It mm. is detriment to the country. It's detriment to the people of Manipur. Mm. Professor Thonkalal, what do you think? Are there outside influences that uh, you know people may be privy to 
but have not been able to do anything about? You know, uh, I don't believe in this kind of uh, uh, claims or problematization of this outside influence because uh, the, the, the borders are guarded by uh, Assam Rifles, BSF and others and it's the role of the state government in the Northeast to identify and deport if possible uh, any kind of uh, you know any kind of uh, illegal immigrants uh, existing in their uh, territory and they can deal with that within the existing uh, laws and regulations uh, why are, who is stopping them to uh, deport or to uh, you know uh, detain any kind of illegal immigrants nobody is stopping let them identify uh, let the police do their work and then the, the due process of uh, law could take place that's uh, my clear answer and then the law is enough to deal with illegal immigrants in the Northeast. And uh, in addition to that, I would react to some of the comments made earlier, uh, for instance, by uh, uh, B.L. Bora stating that uh, the problems of uh, uh, OP has, uh, you know, uh, has exacerbated uh, the kind of uh, drug laws that we have, or uh, saying that drug lords uh, were there yet uh, the, the poppy cultivation has exacerbated the, the condition. Definitely that's true, but, uh, you know, claiming uh, everything to poppy cultivation uh, definitely is not the uh, solution because uh, if you look into uh, the Golden Triangle, which is very close to Manipur, uh, that's where drugs are coming from, that's uh, where the, uh, the, the finalized product of drugs like number four, the blue, white and others are coming. And more in other places are the roots. And the Indian uh, paramilitary forces have the you know mandate to uh, to control all these. So uh, we are very close to Golden Triangle, and it's the duty of each and every one of us to uh, look into it, study it, and uh, suggest for remedies rather than blaming uh, you know all uh, you know all farmers and others who are uh, you know spread out in the hills of Manipur. And secondly. Uh, there's a kind of, uh, what I would say, disparity in the treatment of uh, two groups of people. For instance, uh, on the last week attack on Amar Valley in Jiribang, you find that uh, a paramilitary force was located about uh, five kilometers away from the site of uh, occurrence. But uh, it looks like uh, the paramilitary forces were indifferent to the, you know, the, the incident there, the burning of the village as well as the killing of uh, certain people. So, uh, on the other hand, yesterday's incident, you could uh, uh, find uh, in uh, uh, viral videos that the paramilitary forces were, uh, you know, strongly engaging and repelling the, uh, the kind of attack that we have yesterday. So, uh, this kind of disparity in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the paramilitary forces will not solve any problem. Uh, they have to act neutral. Any kind of attack coming from the other side or the other group uh, has to be thwarted by the paramilitary forces. That has to be very clear uh, and that will uh, help in maintaining or restoring peace in Manipur. And uh, I would ag agree with uh, Professor uh, B.L. Bora on this uh, comment that the spirit of accommodation has not uh, existed uh, you know, uh, uh, to a large extent in India today. I would agree with that. Because if you look into uh, the Constituent Assembly debates uh, way back 75 years ago, uh, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar, you know, and other people who were accommodative of the uh, demands of the minorities, whether it's religious or uh, in community lines, they have accommodated uh, the tribals of Northeast through six schedule. But however, in the case of Manipur, uh, I have repeatedly said that since the state of hood of Manipur, how many types of accommodations has been made to the tribals of Manipur? They were demanding six schedule. This was never agreed. Never agreed uh, in the sense that uh, with certain, you know, uh, amendments and uh, uh, certain amendments they say. So that uh, did not happen uh, in terms of, uh, you know, bringing six schedule into Manipur. On the other hand, you would find that uh, in, in Fall Valley or the majority community has uh, got uh, eight schedule where Manipuri is recognized as uh, you know uh, uh, a schedule language of India. And secondly, uh, very recently in 2019, uh, the demand of uh, certain valley-based groups uh, for 
uh, implementation of inner line permit has been permitted by the UN Home Ministry. And now they are demanding scheduled trap scales again. So the, the, the kind of demand that are keep on coming from Imphal Valley has been accommodated uh, in the last three decades, while the only demand from the tribal communities has never been accommodated. Look into the, uh, the dispersion that would have been to, to these people in the hill areas of Manipur. We never talk about, we never uh, analyze about uh, all these kinds of uh, political demands. All right, so sir. These, All right, uh, we have completely run out of time, but I appreciate everyone who joined us and participated in this debate. It's important to look, important to look at permanent solutions when it comes to uh, money put, and it's high time. We take a short break. We'll be right back. Oh, Mr. Vikas, ki file. Ha. Policy bazaar. 